Everybody, welcome to Monday of the third week of Easter, and we're penetrating more deeply into Easter, more uh, deeply into uh, the Gospel of John, and also the Acts of the Apostles. And you're being introduced to this person, Stephen, very important person. The Acts, the first part of the Acts of the Apostles, and today's the feast of Saint Athanasius, a heavyweight. Um, in adult education class, we're talking about all the different heresies about. Uh, uh, Christology, or uh, how Jesus really was, and his uh, nature, his two natures of human and divine. And he lived in a time of the Arian heresy. They believed that Jesus was created. He was a created being, which uh, we we do not believe to be true. He was consubstantial with the begotten, begotten, not made of the Father. And so Saint Athanasius was a defender of orthodoxy here against Arius, and we'll pray through his intercession that we understand the truth that the church teaches. Here, in my mind, I'm not going to get a little homily here, but in my mind is the great importance of the church. It keeps us on this. It is the light that shows us the way to the real Jesus. The church does. Outside of that, it's kind of a crapshoot. So I, I I am a man of the church in that regard and, and really, really uh, think it's important for us to all be that way too. So let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
God loves us as we enter into this uh, uh, Easter season more deeply, and may we experience his resurrected life more and more and more each day. Let's ask him for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you suffered and died upon the cross for us. Lord, have mercy. Uh, you rose again on the third day, Christ, have mercy. You ascended to be at the right hand of the Father. You, you ascended to the center of the universe. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who raised the bishop, St. Anthanasius, to an outstanding champion of your son's divinity, mercifully grant that rejoicing in his teaching and his protection, we may never cease to grow in knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called synagogue of freedmen, Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia came forward and debated with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. They th then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders, and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified, This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law, for we have heard him claim that this Jesus the Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there, were, there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not gone along with the disciples in the boat. 
But only his disciples had left. Another boat came from Tiber Tiberius near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, I say to you, you're looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not look for food that perishes, but food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, the Father, God, has placed his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one that he sent. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's a whole mouthful of different things going on in there. And um, six years ago, Christina Lino writes, I was among the millions gathered in Poland for World Youth Day. She says she was in this muddy, rainy field with a sea of people, could hardly even see Pope Francis way off in the distance. But in her earpiece that translated his words, she said they were words that were as challenging as they were clear for her. Words that said, you won't find happiness on your sofa. You won't find happiness in front of your television set. He said, trade your comfort, comfortable sofa for a good pair of walking shoes. Set out on a new path for your life with your new walking shoes. Jesus would never do something like this, I don't think. Maybe he had a moment or two of all that. But mostly he was on this path, uh, uh, doing the will of his Father. And Jesus saying something like that in this Bread of Life discourse that we're talking about here in, 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 uh, in the Gospel of John, the people are following Jesus because they had their fill of food. And, and um, they were looking for him. And so Jesus is saying to them something like Pope Francis would say, they're seeking Jesus because they got their comfort. They got the food. But in their world, who could blame them in some sense for all of that? So Jesus had a tremendous work to try to get them to see what he was trying to say to them. He was saying something like this. There is, a great, there is something greater than being comfortable here. The experience of the radical, reckless, extravagant love of my Father. All the different things, the miracles of Jesus, this miracle of the loaves and fishes, is a sign that points us to this enduring bread of the Father, that God loves us. And you and I are called to capture that love and be a part of this resurrecting life that is changing our world. Now, how might we, you know, do the work that God has asked you to How do we focus on this enduring love? And, and I thought what I would do is I would read from uh, this book by Pope Francis, Let Us Dream by Pope Francis. What, is, what does he say that you and I should do now, you know, as we experience this extravagant love of God and as we move forward in our lives? And, and he writes... Let yourself be pulled along, shaken up, challenged. Maybe it'll be through something you've read in these pages. Maybe through a group of people you've heard about in the news or that you know about in your neighborhood whose story has moved you. Perhaps it'll be a local elderly person's home or a refugee hospitality or a hospitality center or an ecological regeneration project that is calling on you. Or maybe people closer to home who need you. When you feel the twitch, stop and pray. Read the scriptures. Or just create space inside yourself to listen, open yourself, transcend, and then act. Go up, go visit, offer your service. Say you don't have a clue what to do, but maybe you can help. Say you'd like to be part of a different world, a world that's enduring love. And, and you thought this might be a good place to start. Something like that to help us. That evening in Poland, Christina heard words of encouragement from Pope Francis. God expects something from you. God wants you to dream. Let's you and I not settle for comfort. Let's not use God for comfort. Let's be part of this whole recreation of the world that God envisions. And let you and I be part of that great enterprise of this, this, this recreation that comes to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's never stop until we know this enduring bread of the Father's love. This, this enduring bread that causes us to act. Here's my questions for today. 
Where are you seeking your comfort? Where have you gotten stuck and need to learn to dream again? God bless you folks. Glad you're here joining us as we begin this third week of Easter. We're looking forward to seeing you once again tomorrow. Bye-bye now.